What's up guys, Matt Smith here and welcome back to another video. In this one, you're going to be seeing me ripping my YZ250 apart and rebuilding it. Semi doing a little bit of a how-to on how to do things and just basically for the people that haven't seen it before and want to see it. So, enjoy. Rightio, so I've just prepped my work area. I just like to grab out the majority of my tools before I start. I'm a bit of a... OCD, neat freak, weird person when it comes to those things. So it just makes the job easier for myself. I'm going to be doing a top end rebuild on my YZ250. So there's a new Woosnar piston. First ring, second ring, gudgeon pin, little end bearing, and circ clips. A gasket kit here. And that is going to make the job a whole lot easier. Get a bucket, drain all your coolant out first before you kind of pull anything down. Probably don't really need to be showing this side of things. It's just pulling the bike down and getting it to its raw state so I can get to the motor. But for the people that are here and haven't really done it or seen it. Right on. So we're down, plastics are off, uh, engine mounts are basically broken down, radiator coolant is out. Uh, so yeah, now I'm gonna crack all the head bolts, get it all undone, ready basically to slip that cylinder off um, and have a look, expose the piston rings, see what's going on in there because I honestly haven't seen inside this motor for a long time. Uh, so yeah, it's all gonna be pretty interesting for me and. Let's keep it rolling. Obviously, carby is connected here on the manifold. Loosen that rubber boot. Uh, there's two there. You can pivot them and slide that out the way or move that out the way completely. And then that barrel is then free to slide off out. Do what you got to do down in there and then back on. I just got the head and the barrel off the motor and this is what we're left with. So we've got a piston, rings in there, Head gasket, it all looks pretty damn good in there, realistically. Regardless of where or nowhere, it's getting a new piston and rings put in it. We got the barrel and the head sitting down there. Um, I haven't really had a look inside the barrel as of yet. You guys probably can't see much with the lighting anyway, but. Uh, it looks pretty, pretty nice up in there. I haven't felt it, but uh, yeah, it's hard to, hard to say that there's something wrong in there really when it's looking like that. So now over at the bike, it's time to get the piston out and off the conrod, gudgeon pin out, circlips, all that, little end bearing. So basically you set a pointy nose pliers up in there to grab the circlip out so then the gudgeon pin will slide. You can just do one side to get the gudgeon pin out to get everything out of off the motor to the bench. So this is where we're at. Let's get into that. And I guess you've got to be semi careful pulling these out. It's not really something that you reuse, a part that you reuse this circlip, but it's it's a part that can easily go over the other side of the shed and you'll never find it again. So yeah, just keep that in mind. All right, circlip one, out. It's just, it's a little bit jammy because of all of the oil. Silly as that might sound. Sometimes causes friction. Oof. Oof. All right, there we go. Now, as you can see, I had to give it a little light, light tap with a hammer and punch. Um, it's not really something that recommending is a good idea, I guess, but sometimes you've got no, no choice. Um, so if you don't have a choice and you've got to do it, be very, very careful. Keep in mind what's going on around there and what happens with this part. And remembering the rod to be down, the piston sunk down, it's up here and you're tapping, it's got leverage and it can bend things and we don't want to do that. And that's why I say light taps, because we don't want to put pressure on big end bearings down in the um, arse of the motor, all that stuff. So, yeah, that is that. Let's keep moving. So that's, there's a Conrad there, piston ain't on top, obviously. 
So I've pulled it out, it's here on the bench and it looks pretty damn good still. Realistically, it's not too bad at all. Except I did just spot something as I was telling you that. Yeah, right, full on. So I've had this happen to me once before and I'll have to ask dad when I see him, but in the port here, in one of the windows, you can probably see there that there's a pit right there. Now I've had the whole bottom side of this skirt of one of these pistons break off inside my motor and that was not fun. So I don't know if that's the start of that about to happen again and I've just caught it or if that's a, let's say, imperfection in the cast of when they made this piston. Um, but I will ask dad when he's back and we should be able to get a bit of an answer out of that. But that's pretty crazy because yeah, this thing's moving at a fair pace and if that was to crack anymore or break it, yeah, you could only imagine the mess it makes. But anyway, that's good. That's there, out, and I can see that, touch it, all that good stuff. Here's the new piston. Oh, well, we'll, we'll match up piston to piston. There's definitely no pit in this one like this one. But uh, yeah, I guess that's a good thing that we, I, I caught it before anything came of that, I guess. So back at the bench, need to get all the, uh, all the components out of their bags. So we have a little end bearing and a gudgeon pin. Ring, ring. There's two. Now we also have two circlips. What I like to do is get some thin motor oil, just some nice oil in a tin basically. Probably don't use canola oil, cooking oil, that stuff, but any thin based motor oil. When I'm assembling any of these parts, I like to give all this stuff a bit of a lick. When I've got it, God damn it. Oh, 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 there we go. Just because you don't want, you don't really want raw metals touching each other, especially when they're spinning the way they are and moving and causing friction upon each other and whatnot. So always put them together with a bit of slips. That little dude up into, I guess, that spot you don't want to go through because then your conrod ain't going to be able to go up in there. You've still got to get your little end bearing in, all that stuff. So just slip it in, leave it there. So then you can go over to the bike, put it over the conrod, push your gudgeon pin in while slipping your little end in. That's in, then that's on. That's, that's a complete component there. All right, so now we're back over at the bike. After explaining to you what I'm about to do. So I've got the small end bearing here. I'm just going to slip in, slip it in the top of the conrod there. Obviously, that's got a little bit of oil on there, like I was explaining in the last clip. On the piston, they're usually marked. You've got an arrow here to show that's the front of the cylinder. So we want it sitting in there like that on top of the conrod. So now we can just grab your conrod. It usually helps if it's extended all the way to the top. Like I was saying before, it's easier to go on, have your gudgeon pin sitting out of the piston like that a little bit. So it's almost like a guide, slip it down and you can just put your thumb on it and push it straight through that top of the conrod and the small end bearing. Now you can see, obviously I've just lined it up, it's sitting in the hole just, and with not much effort whatsoever, that gudgeon pin will slide on in there. Now that's obviously the benefit of having all new parts. When you've seen before, when I was pulling the old one out, that had a bit of, you know, old oil, well not old, just, just oil sitting in there. When things do sit around, it causes them to get suction and friction and you go to pull it out and it feels like it's, it's seized or wrong in there or something's gone wrong, but that's all it is. You can see now that, that one slipped back in there perfectly and now we're up to the stage of dropping the circlips down in there. So what you've got to be careful on when you come up to this point is usually have by this stage a lot of oil on your fingers and things get slippery. Um, these guys are quite small. They love to spring and bounce all over the place and you'll never, ever, ever find them again. 
So you've just got to keep that in mind and remember that that can happen. I thought I just did what I explained to you and lost it, but found it. So now we want to get these circlips sitting in to their grooves to hold that gudgeon pin in from slipping out. It can be a little bit of a process, so bear with me. I'm going to get this one in there and get back to you. I can just push that in, you'll hear it clip. Clip, there you go. Now, I've almost landed that in the right place. I'll grab this for you and show you guys what I'm talking about here. That circlip I've just slipped in there, you can see how it's opened in that half moon gap there. Let me get my fingers right. In that half moon gap there, you can see the end of that um, circlip lands pretty much half of that. We want to try and slip that little guy up this way so he ain't half in that moon. You want to have that almost look like there's a full band going through that moon there. So I'll get that done now. Beautiful. To the other side. Thing, other circlip. Um, basically, pretty much the same process. And there we go. That's sitting in its groove now. And you'll hear it pop. Good to go. Next step, rings. So with the rings, you will see that there is the two. They're both the same, but on the top side, they've got a marking, and that marking goes to the top side of the piston. So that's pretty much all you've got to think about and understand and know when you're putting the rings over the top of the piston. A piston with two rings on it. Ready for the barrel to slip back over and pull on down. Yep, see? Dad just said then, that's what Dad just said. Don't forget to put a little bit of lubrication on basically dry parts going in. I've explained this to you, but just a bit of a point to prove that that is what, you know, it's, it's a good thing to do. So you're not binding metal on metal in a place that is going to be getting thrashed as such. You don't want to cake it and load it up too much. So if you can just spare it and grab it from one side to the other, don't load your finger up with heaps of it. Base gasket to go on. Right. Now that's good to go. That's on in its place. Right, so sometimes this can be a little bit tricky with, with the space you're working with in here and whatnot. Um, and obviously the rings need to be pinched around the piston to be able to fit down the sleeve of the barrel. So that's obviously going to be done individually. Top one, bottom one, and then keep moving on down. If it becomes a bit of a struggle, don't force it because you will bend, twist, break something. Um, so just don't force, make sure it's all sitting there moving by itself basically and you can just use hardly next to none pressure and it will slide and locate everything it should be done that way. You don't want to go and force things because that's when you break it. So let's slip this on. If you can get another set of hands, that's great, use them. Because all you would do, especially if it's your first time doing this, you're going to fight against everything. So, this is the best way. You can see the piston up the top there. You can see it moving up and down, making all the noises it should. Alright, so basically now, this is where we're at the stage. It's pretty much the head gasket. Is Gaskets have got to go on, the, the rubber O-rings, we'll slip them on, I'll put the head back on the barrel. Got cylinder, cylinder nuts back on now. The, these main four ones are pretty much run off feel um, because it is so hard to get in and around there. And then these, the, the six top cylinder head um, bolts are the ones that you should really tension. So now we'll slip those rubber O-rings in and put that head down. Sometimes these are a little tighter than the grooves that are in the actual cylinder itself. So you just give them a little bit of a stretch, not much at all, a little bit, and then they'll sit down in those grooves and they won't try and pop out all the time because when you go to slip the head on, that pops out of the groove and you slip this down and put some tension on it, it's going to squish it, it's going to be in the wrong place, it ain't going to work. Pinches it and it'll leak cool. Heads on. So now, a little bit of grease on all six of the studs. Grab the stud caps again. That was one thing I forgot to explain to you before about the copper washers. I was about to and forgot. 
There's six copper washers. The copper can squash to a certain point and will seal what needs to be sealed so it's not going to leak. Alright, now we will tighten up those six bolts. That clicking you can hear is obviously the tension. Tension being right. Sounds pretty, pretty good. I'll put this lever back on and then close this side of the motor up because then it's done, it's complete. I know it's finished then, I don't have to really go back and I can stop thinking about it. Get your carby sitting into this manifold first. And do that rubber boot. In a roundabout place you'll feel it, it'll sit back into a position where it feels right. It's already on there. Seat it back on. And it's in, it's done, on, good to go. So now basically subframe bolts back in, tighten up both of those uh, hose clamps around your rubber boots, that stage is done. Now I can do this engine mount back up here. I can put this hose back on, tighten him up. Look, it's a good sequence to do. Um, if you put a bolt in or put a clamp on, do it up. Don't leave it and think you're going to get it later because it gets forgotten about. You will forget about it. And again, from experience, take it or leave it. Expansion chamber, exhaust, whatever you want to call it, springs. At the front here, make sure they're on the cylinder first before you go and slip it into the tight gap that's there. Now we've got this little special tool here, spring puller. If you don't have one, get yourself one. Don't force against them and fight against them with pliers, pointy noses, all that. Get yourself a spring tool. That's it. Done, done. Tank back on is where I'll be at next, and then seat should be good to go. Oh yeah, back to pretty much a complete YZ250. Just got to put a little bit of coolant in the radiator, and then fill it up, give it a kick. This is always a pretty exciting time. For me anyway.